So, uh, all right, we'll pick it up with the Atlanta Hawks as, as well as they are playing of late. Um, Mike, they've seen teams pass them up a little bit here in the Eastern Conference. Washington, uh, Boston has kind of improved their position. But how do you see this Atlanta team? Do you feel like this is a team that can eventually get themselves and stay in the top four or, or not? Well, to me, I think the good news is that they're above water, okay, and <laughs> doing well right now because for a while there, it looked like they couldn't figure out anything. That bad yeah, it, it was just a, a terrible stretch of was this combination of players going to be able to get it done? I think at that point they made the decision that Kyle Corver was expendable, so they did the deal and moved Corver on. But uh, Sam was just mentioning to me how well Mike Dunleavy has played, right, Sam, since he's come yeah. in. Well, when you look at the, a month ago, the Hawks were ready to blow this thing up, trade Kyle Corver, trade Paul no, Millsap. Now, all of a sudden, they're winning. And you look at this team right now, they got to be excited. Look, the reason they traded Kyle Corver, Tim Hardaway Jr. Look how these young players are starting to develop and how these guys are playing. Dwight Howard has found a little bit of fountain of youth. He's rebounding and scoring inside. And then Paul Millsap has just been so consistent. So you look at this Hawks team and you look at the rest of the Eastern Conference. They're right in the thick of things because... On any given night, they can beat you. And the key for this team was Dennis Stroder. Early in the season, they struggled because as a young point guard used to coming off the bench, it was, they gave him the keys to the car. And he wasn't quite ready to drive that car. But now, as time goes on, every game, he's gotten better and better. And you see what they like about Dennis Stroder. You see why they moved Jeff Teague. He's aggressive. He's a good point of attack on, def on defense. And he lives in the paint. And as his shooting gets better, the Hawks are going to continue to roll. So I feel like, look, the Hawks are one of many teams in the East that can challenge Cleveland right now. Because Cleveland, of all the teams in the East, they're the ones that are struggling. They're the ones that are publicly talking about the things that they don't have. Atlanta Hawks 19-9 and nine in their last 28. Uh, four of their five starters in double figures here at the half, 65-39. It's the Hawks out in front. Mike, as far as Orlando is concerned, what do you make of their roster? It's almost like they can't get any traction and it looks like, as we were talking while we were watching the game, they have a lot of good players, but I don't, I don't know if they have good players that fit together in what Frank Vogel is trying to do. Without question, you know, bringing in a new coach, they built this team to start this season thinking defense. That's the way they were going. They have Ibaka, they bring in Biombo, uh, and you talk about Vucevic as a, a talented, a of, a young, big, big man. Okay? 2010 guy. But they haven't played the guys that they brought in the way they thought they were going to be able to play or where they had played before they picked them up. So as a result, it's been a big struggle. They had to make a decision, keep Oladipo or keep Fournier. Well, they kept Fournier and yeah. moved Oladipo on. So that was a big decision. The young man that they thought, uh, Herzogna, Herzogna. Was, you know, they had big hopes for him a year ago. He barely even smells a game right <laughs> now. Uh, you know, so some of the things that they thought, they're rethinking right now.